In this world, robots are just as common as people and everyone has at least one in their house to help them in their everyday tasks. However, the android owners became divided into two groups, the ones who see them as tools that help their lives, as the androids can only perform tasks ordered by their masters, and there are those who treat them like they would any other person. They become so close to their android, becoming not only physically dependent on them but also emotionally. Rikuo used to be a genius pianist, winning numerous competitions and being admired by many. But one day, he saw an android playing the same music that he had spent years practicing perfectly after only listening once. He felt deflated, questioning what the point of his practice was if robots could replicate his talent so easily. Since then, Rikuo has been unable to find joy in playing the piano, and doesn't play it anymore. Rikuo's family has an android, Sammy. When Rikuo's parents are away, he relies on her for everyday tasks such as making coffee, preparing breakfast, and picking up his drunk older sister from parties. Though Rikuo uses Sammy all the time, he doesn't treat her with respect, he in fact despises her. He noticed something strange in Sammy's logs, a message asking if she was enjoying the Times of Eve Cafe. Rikuo had a hunch that something was up with Sammy, she'd been going out on her own more lately and even taking detours from her usual errand routes. So he showed it to one of his friends, Masaki. Rikuo was certain that something sinister was occurring. He needed help, and Masaki seemed to be the only one who could assist him. With Sammy's GPS tracker, Rikuo was determined to uncover the android's evil plot for world domination. He and his friend reach an alley with a strange building, wondering if any robots would actually be hanging out there. But then, suddenly, one appears and heads inside. They follow it, opening the door to see a cafe. There's even a board on the wall welcoming them, but it has some rules written on it too. The board proclaimed that all who entered the cafe were to be treated as equals, regardless of whether they be human or android. The only other rule was for each individual to enjoy themselves. They sit down very confused about the other customers because they saw an android enter for some reason. But everyone inside looks human. At the cafe, it seemed strange that none of the people had a halo. Androids usually have these red halos that turn green when they are given an order by their masters. But here, everyone was drinking coffee, something robots don't do. The two became increasingly suspicious as they ordered the cafe's special blend, Eve Blend. They begin to question the strange combination of humans and androids. Suddenly, a cheerful girl named Akiko appears and introduces herself and the other patrons inside. Koji and Rina are always so sweet together at their table, like true lovebirds. Satoru is at his spot with a book in hand, just minding his own business. Nagi serves everyone the same yummy blend of coffee and makes sure everyone is treated equally. And finally, Shaimai and Chai, father and daughter. The two kept going against the rules and talking about how humans were different from androids. Nagi, who had heard it all, wasn't too happy, so she took away their coffee. Rikuo was so intrigued to know why Akiko would often visit the cafe, and he asked her if her family had any robots. Akiko replied yes and explained to him that both humans and androids have feelings, and she wants to be able to understand them. His thought stayed with him after leaving the cafe, even as he was at school thinking about it, which didn't match up with what he had always believed. He then spotted Akiko and saw a halo of light buzzing around her head, revealing that she was an android. Sammy made his coffee at home, but when he took a sip of it, he could tell something was different. It's the same blend as the one he had at the cafe. He asked her about it and she admitted that she had changed the ingredients without his permission. His face turned red with anger and he demanded to know if she was doing anything without his orders. But Sammy simply shook her head, pretending nothing had happened as she went back to work. He confronted Sammy, demanding an explanation for why she had gone out the day before. She tried to dodge his questions and lied, claiming that it was to get groceries on orders from his parents and didn't go to Times of Eve as he suspected. Rikuo told Masaki that Sammy had denied something she hadn't been asked to do. Masaki remarked that Sammy must be keeping some kind of secret and could possibly be telling lies. They decide to go to the cafe and catch her, but when they get there, they don't find her. So they decide to wait for her to catch her in the lie. Rikuo sees Akiko and goes to talk to her, but Chai takes his glasses and runs away, hoping that he will play with her. He has to chase her to get them back, but before he does, he wants to break the rule and ask Akiko if she's a robot. Shaimai came and explained that it's normal for people to not always tell the truth, especially when it comes to protecting those they care about. Rikuo started understanding that Sammy probably lied because she didn't want him to get hurt, and he finally realized that she had her own feelings as well. Sammy stepped into the cafe to buy the coffee blend. Akiko asked if her master liked the coffee blend, but Sammy said she wasn't sure. She explained that her master didn't like it when she did things on her own. 
Rikuo went to the counter to get his glasses from Nagi and when he put them on, he noticed Sammy standing just near him with her hair tied up. He aggressively let down her hair so that he could take a better look at her and was too stunned to even say a word. She starts running away and he chases her. But the door has a special lock to make sure nobody can follow each other and uncover their identity. Nagi gently explained to Rikuo how Sammy found the cafe and was able to open up and be her true self with them. All she wanted was for Rikuo to feel joy and happiness in his life. When he arrived home, he called Misaki and tells him about finding Sammy in the cafe. Sammy was right beside him, bringing him coffee. He thought of what Nagi said about feeling appreciated, so he smiled at Sammy and thanked her for the coffee, making her beam with joy. Masaki and Rikuo come back to the cafe because Masaki wants to find out what secrets are hidden there. While Rikuo is starting to like being there and getting to know about the androids, Nagi suggests that they should get to know the other customers instead of just watching them in a strange way. She encourages Koji and Rina to come over and joins the table. She wants them to talk and get to know each other better. They were all standing there but none of them said anything. Rikuo was looking at Rina's chest and that made Masaki angry so he slapped Rikuo. Rikuo curiously eyed Koji's camera and asked him all about it. He placed the camera beside the cafe's digital display button and was incredibly surprised when he saw Koji's pictures appear on the screen. Rina was so jealous when she saw a picture of Koji with another woman. She ran away and Rikuo followed her, only to discover that Rina was an android. She was once a bodyguard for someone important, but got her leg injured and got abandoned. She ended up meeting Koji, fell in love with him and decided to be by his side, despite him being human. He consoles her and they come back to Mesaki and Koji, who are also talking about Koji and Rina's relationship. Koji is an android who works for the woman in the pictures, but he loves Rina. His master got so hurt by her past relationships that she became dependent on him. Even for the bed dance, don't ask me how. He wants to make his master happy and be loyal to her, so he decided to get closer to Rina to better understand human emotions and help her go through the trauma. Both are unaware that the other is an android which further distortions the line between androids and humans because of their behaviors and ability to feel human emotions. The two boys leave the two lovebirds alone realizing androids are capable of love. On their next visit to the cafe, they saw an old-looking android model walking in. It looked a bit wobbly and unsteady because it seemed to be worn out and not working properly. The robot walked over to Rikuo and Masaki and politely asked if it could join them. At first, they were startled, but before they could say anything, the robot explained that according to the cafe's rules, it was allowed to be there just like any other customer. Masaki introduces himself and Rikuo, telling its human nature to introduce themselves. The android tries to copy them and introduce itself but breaks its head because it can't remember its name. The android fixes its head and comes back, still acting strangely while Nagi wanted to take its order. But Rikuo stayed calm and finished his coffee. He knew that if he didn't speak up, the android might start to overheat and explode. So he quickly ordered for himself and let the android copy him. When the coffee came, they tried desperately to stop it from drinking it. Androids don't drink coffee. To distract it, they asked it questions such as how old was it and where did it come from. It said that it was 8 years old, and they compare it to Chai. The android, much to their surprise, didn't explode after drinking the coffee through a tube attached to its neck, making the two realize that they must have looked stupid by all the stunts they pulled. Nagi comes to talk to the android to talk about its past. The android tells them that it was employed to take care of a child who drew a picture, but it doesn't remember the child it was taking care of. It doesn't even remember the address of the household it worked in. This causes it to malfunction when it realizes that it doesn't even remember its name. Nagi hugs it as it starts to shut down. Rikuo awoke to find the breakfast Sammy had prepared for him, and as he ate he read the newspaper that had been announcing his grand prize victory in a past competition. The thought of playing piano filled his head with nostalgia, and even in class, his hands moved on their own as if playing an imaginary piano. Mesaki brought over a report that he had found on his father's desk. It was about an experiment where they created androids to take care of children. This made them think Shimei could be an android looking after Chai. Rikuo was surprised to find that Chai wasn't with her dad when he arrived at the cafe. He asked Chai why Shimei wasn't there and she told him that he was not actually her real father he was just her foster parent. Rikuo asked Nagi what was going on and found out that Shimei wasn't always there for Chai. He wanted to know why Shimei kept hurting Chai by leaving her alone, but she got really upset and ran away. Satoru, who Rikuo had never spoken to before, explained to him that sometimes people hurt others without even realizing it. Rikuo was so upset by the answer that he stormed away from the table and plopped himself down at the loft, 
where he quickly fell asleep. Rikuo awoke to the sounds of a familiar melody in the cafe and sees Sammy playing his song on the piano. As he descended down, memories from his time there filled his thoughts. He had unexpectedly come to enjoy the cafe, especially with the androids whom he had once not particularly cared for. Sammy apologized for playing, explaining that Chai enjoyed it. She explains that she once played the song to Chai because she misses listening to Rikuo playing the piano. He sits at the piano as he tells them that he stopped playing at home because Sammy was getting curious, and he was scared she would become better than him. But he doesn't care anymore. He plays the song beautifully, making Chai excited for another one. By the end, Rikuo even admitted that he started to enjoy the time he spends at the cafe. Masaki's been acting kind of strange lately, not wanting to go to the cafe. But they finally understand why. Masaki's dad is on TV, as the head of the ethics committee. They're against androids forming bonds with humans, as they think the androids must be plotting something against humanity. Therefore, the committee claims to be taking care measures to investigate and shut down those robots. Rikuo asks Masaki to go with him but Masaki refuses. But he ends up going to the cafe after getting getting a call from Rikuo, telling him that there's a new android in the cafe. Masaki was shocked to discover that it was his android, Tex. He had been lying to his best friend, Rikuo, about not owning one. With a heavy heart, Masaki finally told Rikuo the truth and revealed the secret of his relationship with Tex. Masaki explains Tex took care of him while he was still a child, but it suddenly stopped talking to him. Masaki knew his father ordered Tex not to talk anymore, but he still felt like he was being betrayed. Suddenly, Tex began to talk. He started telling secrets about the new android that had just come into the cafe. The ethics committee had sent the android undercover to investigate the place. Despite not being able to speak with Masaki, Tex was always eager to keep him safe, so he used the office of Masaki's father to explore the ethics committee database and learn what they were researching. It was all in an effort to make sure that Masaki stayed out of harm's way. Masaki, who had always wanted to hear Tex speak since he was young, stops the android from leaving so that Tex can continue talking. Despite being ordered to not talk, Tex can do it because of the android law on his chip, where he can go against all orders if his master is in danger. The android gets away and Tex keeps quiet again. But Masaki is now relieved to know that Tex always wants to be by his side and protect him no matter what. They leave the cafe to report to his father that Tex didn't go out of the house without Masaki's orders. While Rikuo continues to hang out at the cafe, realizing that androids can't dominate the world because they have more humanity inside them than humans, especially Sammy. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.